Hi, this video is part of uh, my AutoML series and in this video we are going to talk about an AutoML framework called Teapot. What we are going to do is we are going to take a data set and we are going to walk through the features of uh, Teapot. In the next video we will be seeing one other AutoML framework called AutoVML. Uh, basically what we are going to do is we are going to see the different features uh, that are available in different AutoML framework and how we, it can accelerate your machine learning cycle. So a quick recap, in the previous video, we saw the top architecture and we spoke about uh, why do we need AutoML and what problem does AutoML solve. Uh, basically, we said AutoML is predominantly helping us with the right model selection and hyperparameter uh, selection. That is one of the core functionality. While it does future engineering, it's not uh, some part of future engineering, the basic ones. Uh, it's not really future engineering though, it is just the data pre-processing that it does. Now, if you're not seen this video, you can click the link that comes on the top and you can uh, go and visit the video and come back or you don't need to really uh, see that video at all to see this uh, rest of this uh, particular uh, video. Okay, so coming a quick snapshot on teapot. Uh, basically, if you see this, this is the teapot uh, architecture, if I can say an architecture, it is a teapot flow. Uh, the raw data, the data collection and data cleansing is completely outside of the teapot. So teapot assumes that any data that comes to it uh, is numeric in nature. So any categorical value has to be encoded in numeric. And second thing is the missing value and the data cleaning has to be handled outside of teapot. So teapot expects uh, basically a cleansed data set. Uh, it, it, it internally does the future pre-processing like applying PCA, min-max scalar, if required for that particular data set, it takes care of it. It does the model selection and hyperparameter optimization. Now, the future selection and future construction is not straightforward in Teapot, so I'm not going to cover it. Rather, like it's better to skip it. It's not really like that straightforward. Now, getting into the, the code part of it, the first thing is to install Teapot. You can just do an pip install Teapot as shown here. I have already installed Teapot in this particular notebook. Now, what I am doing here is I am importing uh, the Teapot classifier. Since the problem I am going to solve is a classification problem, I am just importing the classifier. Other uh, imports are pretty straightforward, whatever we do in a typical uh, typical machine learning pipeline. All right. Now, coming back, I already have a data set. This is a telecom churn data set. It's available in my GitHub repo. I'm going to share my GitHub notebook uh, uh, after this video. You can basically go into the description uh, of the particular YouTube video and you can get the GitHub uh, ring where you have this notebook. You can play around with it. Uh, my the data set is, all set is also available in the GitHub repo. So basically, you can download or you can just uh, refer it directly and then play around it. So let me run the uh, import packages and let me download the data set. Um, I'm just calling a pandas function to, uh, to, to kind of pass the data set and it's a, and then I'm viewing the data set. So basically this is the data set. This is an telecom churn data set. So if you see uh, basically this data set, uh, the final column churn is dictating whether the customer is churned or not. And what we are trying to do is we are going to predict if a customer is going to churn. The other columns contain basically the customer information, the gender, the whether it's a senior citizen. And there are a lot of other features which talks about the product the customer uses. Now, if you really see there are a lot of categorical values over here. Uh, the phone service is yes, no. The multiple lines is no, no phone service. So there are multiple uh, categorical uh, features here. And as I said, uh, teapot does not handle categorical features. We have to numerically encode it. So let's, let's, let's uh, see like the remaining pipeline. What I'm trying to do is like, I'm just going to see like how many rows and columns are there. Basically there is 21 columns and around, uh, 7,000 odd rows over here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this categorical encoding to a, uh, typical, uh, numerical encoding. So basically, I'm going to use scikit-learn preprocessing function called ordinal encoder. You can also do a one-hot encoding, uh, but for the simplicity of uh, this particular video, I'm just going to do a numerical encoding. While it may not be right for some model, uh, but but this purpose is not to get an accurate or best model. The purpose is to uh, just see the features of uh, a teapot and see like what uh, what kind of accuracy we get in the first pass. 
So I'm just going to, I, I listed the number of columns over here where uh, this particular uh, data set has categorical values. And I'm just going to kind of take the ordinary encoder and uh, create and uh, create and transformed uh, data set. And uh, what I'm doing is I am in the next two lines, I'm kind of updating my uh, churn uh, data frame, which you are seeing on the top. Basically, it has all the category encoding. I'm just calling an uh, data frame update and I'm updating it with the uh, transform data set. So basically all the columns that are there, uh, which are categorical will be replaced with the transform data set. So basically, uh, if you see the new churn data frame, now it does not have any categorical value. It has only a uh, numerical value over here. So now we have a data set, which is all numerical. Now, next I'm going to check if there is an uh, null in the any of the columns. So basically, when I run an is a uh, churn EF is an sum, it has to show me that a null it will be greater than zero. In this case, it shows all zero. So there is no null, but that is not the case. Uh, since, since I know the data set, that is one column that has spaces. And when you are is an L, is an A, it will not show it. So what I'm doing is I'm using a regex function to uh, replace a space with not a number. And I'm not assigning over here. So when I run this, if you see it, it's going to show me the total charges column as around uh, 11 uh, uh, null value, that is the spaces. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the space with NAN and assign it, assign it to the uh, data frame again, the main data frame. And now when I run it, it's going to show me uh, basically the 11 null, null columns. Uh, one more thing I'm going to check is the data type. Uh, if you see the data type, uh, most of the columns are float or int. The first column is customer ID, unique identifier, which does not make any sense for the model. I'm going to drop it. Uh, but if you see the total charges, it's an object, it's a string. The reason is it has some spaces and we converted it into an, uh, uh, not converted into a null now. Uh, but in order for us to make it numeric, we are just going to do a pandas new two numeric function. And then this particular column is in the 19th uh, location. It starts from zero index. So it's in the 19th, uh, 19th kind of location. It's a 19th column in the data set. And I'm just going to do a two numeric. And if you go back and run the, uh, Type again, again, it's going to show its float now. And, and what, what I'm going to do, do since it's an a numerical column, I'm going to uh, use an imputer over here and I'm going to just substitute with medium. Again, this is for test purpose. It all depends on how your data distribution is, what type of imputation you want to use, or you just want to substitute with that default number. It all depends. But here I'm just using that SK alone impute and I'm substituting it with medium value. Uh, and then I'm calling the fit function so that that particular column uh, null is substituted at the median value. Uh, if, I, if I see it now, the data frame is basically um, all the columns over here does not have any null. Now the next two function I'm going to quickly do is I'm just dropping the customer ID. I'm dropping the churn column because it's a target column and creating a kind of a separate target, target uh, data frame over here. And then I'm splitting, I'm using the scikit-learn uh, train test uh, split function uh, to basically split the data frame into train and test. I'm using a 75, uh, 25 ratio and uh, I'm just splitting it. Now, if you see uh, the train, it has all the values over here. Uh, the nulls are taken care, the data cleaning part is completely taken care, the numerical encoding uh, part is also taken care. So now we have a data set that is ready to be fed into uh, the T pot classifier. Now, if you really see here, you still have to do your data analysis, data processing, and everything. And the only thing that the T pot uh, is going to help you over here is basically accelerate your model selection and hyperparameter tuning. Now, let's get into T pot. I will talk about uh, T pot. Um, but before we get to T pot, uh, if you see on the top, we are just calling the T pot classifier we are calling uh, some kind of parameters. I will tell about the parameters and then we are just telling fit and then uh, uh, basically we are executing it. There are two ways to call a teapot. The top one is uh, the very common way to call it. But in this case, uh, basically uh, all the auto ML framework are very compute intensive. So you just uh, need to either distribute the processing or you need to use multiple cores from your CPU. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is rather than using this function, I'm going to use the multiprocessing function. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating, importing a multiprocessing package and going to run this teapot in multiple CPU cores. So uh, that's why, so I'm 
basically if you really see i'm starting a folk server and then i am calling n jobs n jobs is telling okay you can run 20 jobs in parallel but again this is limited to number of cores that are available in your system right once i will start this because it's going to take some time and then walk through uh, the different parameters now the way the teapot works is teapot uses genetic algorithm so when i say genetic algorithm uh, if you if you see an uh, auto ml framework or an hyperparameter optimization framework you have multiple uh, searches you have grid search which search across all the combination you have random search which does random searching of hyperparameters uh, the third one is your Bayesian optimization search, which kind of is uh, intelligent in the random search. What it does, it, it uses a prior evaluation to determine what next type of parameter to search for. And then you have a genetic algorithm based search. Genetic algorithm, if you are not familiar with genetic algorithm, you can quickly read through it. But just to give an understand, just to give a uh, quick understanding of it, uh, the the generation and population size are two important parameters. Now, population size determines uh, basically what, how many models and its model hyperparameter we want to evaluate. So, what happens like uh, when we run this particular teapot, it's going to generate some 20 random, uh, 20 random uh, models. Uh, it can be a logistic regression or it can be XG boost, it can be random force classifier and some sample hyperparameters. That is going to be the first generation. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to take the generation, run the model and select the select some of the top best model that fits it. And the second generation, it does something called uh, a crossover and mutation. So basically uh, for the top selected model, it's going to take if it's if the model is XG boost, I have two XG boost models in top, it is going to interchange some of the hyperparameters. That is the first criteria it's going to do or it's going to also generate some new model types in the second generation and then it's going to uh, basically take some that type of parameter and run the second generation again and out of that it's going to pick the top two models in this case to run it fast i've just given two generation but typically it's better to kind of give uh, at least some five or six generation depending on the complexity of your data set and also the population size is slightly higher but uh, but uh, the more generations and population size you have, it's going to take even more time. Now, in this case, if you really see the generation one, generation two, because it's very low, it, it's almost like given a same score. Uh, it did not uh, get a lot of uh, hyperparameters or model selection to evaluate. Uh, so it's almost same. And it's, it is telling like, okay, logistic regression is the best model in this case. And we, we will see like what all, there, there are ways to see what all models it evaluated and what was the different score that it give. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my test data set and see like what is my uh, test accuracy. So the test accuracy is 81, which is in fact better than the uh, cross validation accuracy of your training data set. So basically the model is not uh, overfitting or uh, overfitting or something over here. Uh, it, it has a different decent accuracy. 80% is good uh, without even um, kind of uh, without even like uh, writing uh, any of the model code uh, basically it, it has searched all the models and hyperparameters and given you the result now one good feature of teapot is basically you can export the entire code and it will give you an exact scikit learn code that you can import and run it so what i'm going to do is i'm ex going to export the code code into this python file and then i am printing this python file if you really see below it has given me the exact code that I can just copy paste into my Jupyter notebook and then uh, just make some few little changes to the data file location and then run thing uh, and run it. And it has created a pipeline for me. So what it is doing is it is creating a pre-processing step called zero count. And then it's uh, it's kind of having a logistic regression with this hyperparameter. So basically I can take this and I can uh, run it outside of uh, my notebook and I can even productionize it if we feel this model is better right and then i can also see what are the different candidates it evaluated we saw logistic regression was the best but if you see here it didn't uh basically gradient descent classifier where the accuracy was only cv score was only 0.66 it also maybe if you quickly scroll down you can see different uh other it did again logistic regression it's showing the score it did a multinomial nb where the score was only 0.5 so it evaluated multiple candidates and it has given a best candidate to us that we can take it. Now, if you want to uh, see which was the best fitted pipeline, 
you can just go to teapot.fitted pipeline and you can see basically the entire pipeline how it was. The pipeline can be even complex. Sometimes it may use PCA, sometimes it may use min max scaler or classifier. So uh, this is about uh, teapot. Uh, what we quickly saw is uh, basically after your data cleansing, it is uh, it is able to accelerate your model selection and hyperparameter tuning. You need to understand that uh, the model that I run was was just a limited generation and population size. Uh, typically, uh, you need to give an higher generation and population size, and it depends on completely on your complexity of the data set. In the next video, we will see auto women. Uh, that's it. Thank you.